Good evening, everyone. It is, um, Friday, February 26th, 2021. It is currently 8.10pm, and it is nighttime where I am, just to make that a little more clear. And, uh, well... I know I sometimes like to keep certain things, uh, silly around here, but, uh... Fuck it, I've had a couple, and now I'm I'm a little tired, and I'm feeling a little, I don't know, uh, what's the word? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, a while ago, I just, I was talking to myself, and I was imagining myself on this, um, on this talk show with a British dude. And the British dude asked, asked me, um, but, um... I don't mean to make myself sound, uh, like pompous or anything, but, um, I pretty much imagined an alternate universe where it's in the far future, and I'm talking to this, um, to, to this guy in the interview, you know, he's interviewing me, and then he's asking me when I'm gonna, uh, release this movie thing, you know, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, it'll come out in due time, and, um, then, then he asks me a thing... Okay, then he asks me this question. If you could see... If you could meet all your critics right now, and uh, they told you everything they felt about um, your work, how would you feel, and what would you say to them? If if I had a bunch of critics, and they showed up here, and I was, and I was able to talk to them, and what would I say to them? I would say... Thank you. Um, if I had... I mean, honestly, criticism is, uh, in my opinion, the best thing that any artist could get from someone. And, okay, well, yes, well, praise is pretty cool. Um, it's always best to get criticism, because, well, that kind of stuff, especially constructive criticism, that that kind of thing can really help you improve your work if you listen hard enough. And if you follow it hard enough, or something like that. Um... Because, for instance, me, um, okay, so I've written a story or two before, and for the most part, I've just been showing it to a bunch of my teachers at school. And most of the time, all they've ever done was compliment it. Okay, well, while well, you may be saying, okay, well, that's pretty cool, that means people like your stuff. Well, um, here's the thing, uh, I mean, while it is nice to have praise, I mean, that means you're eventually just going to wrap yourself in it and use it as a crutch or something. Or at least that's how I feel about it. Um, and, and here's the thing. Um, if I constantly just bathe in praise, and, well, okay, well, yes, I guess that is a bit of a, a bit of a motivational thing, but really it isn't. I, I don't think I'm motivated by praise at all. Most of the time, I'm just... Most of the time, whenever I'm writing something, I'm just motivated by how it'll look afterwards, and how I'll feel about it, and, you know. And lately, I've been making this one story, and at the beginning, it was, it was really fun to write. It was really fun to imagine, because it was a story that had a clean slate. It doesn't take place in the, in the Monsters of Triumph universe. It's not a parody. It's it's nothing. It, it, it pretty much. I, I'm starting totally clean with this new story I'm making. I'm calling it Fluffy Shadows, the loud popping sticks. <laughs> um, go ahead and make make up some theories for what that could be about in the comments if you want. I, I really don't care what you do. But anyway, anyway, uh, back to the criticism thing. I'm rambling. Um. Okay, so anyway, if I had critics, then I would definitely say thanks to them. And the reason why would be, um, well, sometimes I feel like, it, okay, so sometimes whenever I show my stuff to my teachers, they give unconditional praise about it. And as, as grateful as I am for it, sometimes it confuses me. This one time, my one English te my English teacher f said I was the new Tim Burton. Wh why? I mean... I mean, okay, okay, I, I mean, as, as nice as that sounds, I, I really don't get how I'm the new, how I could possibly be the new Tim Burton. Tim Burton was a, a, a really neat artist, and, a, well, a, you know, a really nice movie maker, 
And, well, honestly, I could never be as good as him. It never, I can, I don't think I can ever be as good as any real creator I know of, that is. Um, what makes me, what makes me say that? Because when I write, um, I, I'm not exactly putting that much work into it. In, in fact, I procrastinate all the time. And, um, well, and where exactly do I make my work? I make it on freaking Google Docs. And all I really do is I I just put in snarky dialogue, I color the dialogue, and I just turn it into this big script. It's really not that good. In fact, some might even say it's lazy or mediocre. To which I would say, yes, that would make sense. My work is not that good. It's really not good. In fact, in a way, that's like saying that a fucking Garfield comic is the funniest thing you could ever see in your entire life. I mean, it's just three panels. One starting with the first bit of the punchline, the second building up to the punchline, and then the third one delivering the punchline. It's like a big knock-knock joke. Basically, how exactly did I start my own writing writing thing in the first place? Okay, well, let's see. Um, basically, I just wanted to... In, in the beginning, I started writing with, you know, the standard style. You know, like, it, it was just... It, it just... It was pretty much just going to be just like the same style in one of those chapter books, those novel things. You know, where where instead of a script, it was just, you know, um, something, 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 and then, Hey, stop right there, said Sally, and then just goes on. I'm not sure if that's a good, if that's a good example, but, it, well, never mind. Um, what I'm saying is, um, I used to write it like that, but then eventually that got way too complicated, and I got sick of it, so I stopped writing for a bit. But then I noticed some people making these little, um, you know, these little dialogue joke things on YouTube. And I was like, hey, maybe I could do something like that. So I started doing those things myself. You know, those little gag dialogue common things. And then at one point I started making them really long and story-like. And I actually started enjoying that. And then eventually, uh, well, whenever I would make one really long, I... Well, on YouTube, it, it would say, Sorry, that, that that's way too many characters, buddy. So I'm like, alright, whatever, fuck you. I'm just gonna go on Google Docs and, and stuff. Because cause Google Docs pretty much makes them as long as you want. Right? All right. Anyway, um, and then from then on, I became a freaking Google Docs writer. And, well, at the very beginning, it, it was really fun. I was able to write however the hell I wanted. Um... You know, I was able to write with a freaking script, and it was really easy. Because all I had to do was just, you know, put the name of the character, put put whatever, you know, put a colon, space, and then write down whatever they're saying right there, and it with a period, and then take those little, um, those little star things that you, um, you, you know the eight key? There's like that little star thing above it. You just hit shift, hold it down, then you just hit that, and then you just say whatever they're doing. That, that way you don't have to make a whole story describing what they're doing. You know, because it was easy. But, but then at one point I started to think for, think to myself for a minute, like, about how lazy that was. So, okay, at one point I decided to put, you know, to take out those, you know, the, those really stupid star action star things, or... I don't, I, I'm, again, that's probably a bad example, but anyway, um, but anyway, uh, I took the, I pretty much just put in paragraphs of narration, um, in between the dialogue things every, every now and then, you know, to, to turn it into an actual story, and then, well, things, you know, okay, okay, well, it was a little time consuming, and it, it always came out pretty good. But then I started noticing I had some limited vocabulary, you know? Like, I would, I would make some of the sentences really repetitive. I would make, I would make some of the, I would make some really long, boring, and long, and drawn out jokes, and it, it just seemed dumb. So I tried, I tried thinking over a lot of stuff, and then I fixed that, and then it came out pretty alright. You know? But then I noticed some of the characters were talking the same. Some of them were swearing way too much. Some of them were um, being way too dumb or childish. It, and some some of the bits were way too over the top. Some of the dialogue didn't really make too much sense. And then there would also be plot holes. And I'm like, alright, I'm fixing all this. And from then on, I had a teeny bit of a downward spiral.
it wasn't major. I didn't get depression. I didn't go insane. I just, I don't know. It just, it just got a little out of hand. I, 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 I started from having fun and making something simple to now actually kind of getting stumped in some cases and making something that's pretty elaborate. And now I... Sometimes I feel like I'm not exactly having fun with writing. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting spoiled by the endless praise by my teachers. Because sometimes it makes me... It, it, they almost they almost never give me any real criticism. Never. Um, sometimes they... Sometimes all they ever say is just how good the stories are. I I ask them over and over again if they have any criticism, and they're, and they're like, "Oh yeah, sure, sure, we'll definitely have that in store later." But they almost never do. I, I guess that's I guess that's a pretty good sign because, well, you know that that must mean that my stuff is good, right? Well, okay, I guess, but well, sometimes it makes me nervous thinking that I'm probably showing my stuff to some to like a you know to a really small and simple audience, which I am. All I've been showing it to were these. Possibly, um, over, overly supportive teachers. Now, I'm not saying it's bad to be supportive, but I'm saying it's not necessarily good to be overly supportive. Because if you give someone unconditional love and support, that's either going to spoil them or make them, I don't know, vulnerable to, like, drastic criticism or something like that. So, I guess you can say... I. What I, all I want is for my stuff to not be bad. That's it. I just want my stuff to not be bad. And, and don't we all wish that when we're creating something? I just don't want my stuff to be easily forgotten. I don't want it to become overrated or underrated. I, I want it to at least just be recognized. I want it to be... I want it to improve as much as it could possibly be do that. I don't want it to go downhill like Family Guy or The Simpsons did. Because that shit is way too drawn out. I want it to go out, I want it to go out like a bang. You know, with a bang. Just like Wander Over Yonder did. Okay, well sure, while that show did kind of end prematurely, it, it went out amazingly. With a beautiful finale, and it, it ended perfectly with with the line with this beautiful line, quote, Nothing ever changes, unquote. Which definitely sticks to the point that Wander Over Yonder, for a, for a very, very long while, and for as long as it was around, did nothing but stick to its guns, which is a really good thing. Um, for most shows, that is. And that's what I want. I, w I want to be able to create something that's able to be remembered, that's able to be cherished, that's able to be recognized as something that wasn't made by... Okay, I just want... Whenever I make something, I don't want people to say something like, Wow, this was made by the long-lost son of uh, David James Armsby or some shit. No, I, I don't want that. I don't want some random person to say or think that. I don't want people to say that I'm the new Tim Burton or something. I don't want people to constantly give me praise. No, no, no. I just want them to know I'm a normal person making not-so-normal stories. And do you want to know something about normal people? They have flaws, just like their work does. And, well... If somebody says your work is flawless, they're either lying or they just don't see the flaws at all. Because somebody else later on will see the flaws for themselves. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm analyzing this correctly, but I'm trying my damn best here. So, basically, what I'm scared of is... What I'm really scared of... I'm just, I'm scared of making something bad. I'm scared of just being constantly praised. I'm scared of... 
I'm scared that my stuff will just end up being, like, something long and drawn out, and then it'll eventually be hated, because it'll be, it'll look like something that's, that's being put on life support, just for the, just for the sake of re revenue. I don't want that. Because in the future, what I want, if I ever somehow make some kind of animated series out of monster out of the monsters of triumph and then i eventually end that with a finale and then make some kind of movie after that after i make the movie i'll be done i'll be totally done i'll 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 just end it right there because well even if it gets super popular and people will be asking for some kind of reboot or something i'll just say fuck that i'm not doing that why why well, it's not just because it would be a it would be a lot of work. It's not just because it it's not okay. It's mainly just because. Well, if I say that it's over, if I say that there's a finale and a movie that is known as a double finale, then I'm never making anything beyond that. Because if there's if there's another thing that I would definitely live by, if I were to if I was to ever make some kind of movie series. And I was, okay, if I was ever to make a movie series, I would always end it at a third sequel. Nothing beyond that. Because, guess what? Ice Age fucked that up by having it go on for five movies. And who knows if they might make a sixth one in the future. I, I better stop right now before I get mad. Plus, I'm tired, so... Yeah, I'm sorry if I wasted your time. Um... Have a nice night. And, uh... Happy almost March, I guess. Because, well, uh, to me, it seems like a lot of the snow is melting, so that's cool. Um, and once once March comes, then April will come, and that means May. And that means it'll, you know, it'll start getting warmer. A lot more moister outside. A lot more muddier. And hey, so that means I won't have to carry in as much firewood anymore. Um, I'm sorry I don't have any cool drawings or anything to show you. Um, I I just felt like venting. I, I really felt like I needed to talk about this. Um, and I, I, I really want to know what you guys think. I really do want to know. Bye.